Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or a professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Welcome. Today's show is The Women's Connection, and I'm Barry Switzen, your host for this program. Our program is about women and obstacles that they have come across in their lives and what they have decided to do about them whether it's small, but at the time, of course, it seems monumental, or if it's really monumental, that it's so out of proportion that it's, they can't see here or there or know what to do with themselves. Several years ago, I was going through a major crisis in my life where I didn't know what to do. I lost 14 pounds in four days. I'd like to do that today, but we won't talk about that. And while I was going through this crisis, one of my coworkers, she said to me, one door closes for another door to open. Well, it's great. When you're going through this crisis and you have to look up to see bottom, you don't want to hear this. But lo and behold, sure enough, years later, here I am on television doing something I never expected to do and having my own program. And I overcame the obstacles in the trauma that I was going through to move on with my life. And that's what our program is about, how people have moved on with their lives. Today, I have a special guest. And her name is Maureen Solomon. Welcome, Maureen. Thank you. Maureen immigrated to this country when she was 17 years old from Jamaica. How was that immigrating here, and why did you immigrate? Well, my father died, and mm -hmm. my mom had five of us, and she felt she could not handle all of us in Jamaica, so she came here knowing that we could help ourselves, and then this would help her. Wow. So we actually came to stay here for five years, and to return home. And we we're now here 25 years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so we started basically working and helping ourselves, going to school and making something of ourselves. Now, did you have a hard time finding a job when you first came here or did? Actually not. I, after one and a half weeks, I found a job as a figure clerk. For heaven's sake. Yes, they were fascinated with my speed in mathematics. And so they gave me a job and then they later told me that I could learn um, IBM key punching and I could become a verifier and I started doing that. And I told them that I really wanted to be a nurse uh -huh. and so I was only going to be there for a short time. The short time was like two years and it gave me a chance to earn some money to start nursing school. Fabulous. And you completed it and then you went on and became a nurse at um, Beth Israel? Beth Israel Medical Center, yes. And how long were you there for? Well, I was on staff as a pediatric nurse for five years. Mm -hmm. And I started a family. I got gotten married, started a family. And I actually stopped working only because I had toxemia of pregnancy and I had to take a leave of absence. My goodness. Now, what exactly is toxemia? It is when the baby becomes toxic in the body. And it's usually set off by certain things. In my case, I was earning a trip to Hawaii. And I went to Hawaii Kai because I was over 50% earning that trip and ate all the food with the MSG and oh my, my blood pressure shot right up to 200 over 110. Wow. And this is what happened. The, the whole body became totally toxic. And it's either that you die or the baby is taken out immediately to save your life. And obviously... And in this case, yes. My, I felt I was young enough to have another baby, so if I lost this one, it was okay, but I wanted to save my life. My mom and my husband said, take the baby. So for the first time, when I faced surgery, I was happy. Because <laughs> all along, when I ed uh, medicated any patient for surgery, I always prayed for them. I was so nervous for them. Mm -hmm. But this time, I was happy for myself because I realized that I would have died otherwise. My goodness. And the baby came out as three pounds, and she was healthy, but she had to be in intensive care. She was um, actually, she had a problem with meconium plug. That's the first tool that comes out of the baby, meconium. And because of the medication they gave me to get my blood pressure down, uh -huh. it stopped her from being able to move her bowels. Oh, my goodness. And they almost had to have surgery on her. But she miraculously moved this entire plug in the shape of the colon. That's and wild. after that, she was OK. And now, did you continue working, or did you stop working? I had to stop working because mm -hmm. she was so little. She was three pounds. I had to wait until she was five pounds to take her out of the hospital. And at that time, I felt it was only fair to take care of my own little infant and then take a leave of absence and, you know. 
stay now, home. Now that must have cut into your finances. I mean, today we're two Seriously. income. Seriously, yes, there were two income, yeah. and all of a sudden there was one. So what I had to do was to start a business at home, where I could take care of my child and at the same time earn some money. And so I started a multi-level marketing business, and it's it grew and grew, and I became very successful. Mm -hmm. And I traveled all over the world. I earned cars, and it was just oh wonderful. And I remember going to these shows with my baby, <laughs> and I'm feeding the baby, I'm driving. I did everything with the child. It was just phenomenal. My and goodness. people helped me because they, were, they cared. They saw me doing what I was doing, and they cared, and they helped me. So you took another problem in your life, another trust of faith, mm -hmm. and you have surmounted it and built up a huge business. Yes. And then you were happy you doing things that you loved you were actually still practicing nursing because mm -hmm. you had your own family to practice on exactly you were building your own business mm -hmm. and then you decided to have another child well it so happened that i had gotten pregnant again and this baby in the seventh month of pregnancy i developed diabetes so mm -hmm. i said i don't seem to be too blessed with pregnancies i get sick every time so this nurse that came from Florida, she heard about my diabetes and she heard that I was also very successful in business. So considering I could be on both sides, you know, health and business, she decided to share aloe vera juice from the aloe vera plant with me. But when I questioned her as to what was in it that would help the diabetes, mm -hmm. she did not know. And because of insufficient information, I said I would rather not take it. I would prefer to wait until the baby is born and if I still had diabetes, because it could have been gestational diabetes, which is only during pregnancy. At that point, I would try it. But now, with two people's lives, I said I'd rather wait. And so I did. That's pretty dangerous to try something new when you're doing, in your pregnancy. Exactly, here. with such a far, you know, seven months. So I was under the doctor's care, getting 40 units of insulin per day. Oh, God, I can't even <laughs> take a shot or give them blood, <laughs> let alone give it to myself. Not only did I have to stick myself twice a day, I had to check my blood sugar three to five times a day. Oh, boy. To see what the range was. And so I looked like a pincushion. My fingers were like a pincushion. <laughs> <laughs> but I made it through. The baby was healthy and um, everything was wonderful. And I thought everything was great. So I went back to my normal lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And about a few weeks later, I started to feel as if I was dying. Oh, no. And so I said, I have to go to the doctor because I couldn't figure out what it could be. He checked my blood pressure. He checked my eyes. And he said, you're fine. And I said, oh, no, I'm not. I have something wrong, seriously wrong, because I feel as if my spirit is going here and my body is staying behind. And then he said, when last did you check your blood sugar? And I said, I haven't checked it. I was quite indignant. I said, I'm no longer a diabetic. So he said, but both parents had it, so it's not impossible for it to come back. So I said, but that's when I'm in my 40s, according to what we, we learned in school. Right. So he says, no, it can have happened before that. And then he said, Go home, check your blood sugar, and call me back. Well, how come you didn't check it at the office? I don't understand that. That's a good question, and that made me realize that he did not care about me. I think it's not so much doctors don't care. I think a lot of them don't know. Well, well yeah. or care. I'm, we have another theory on that whole. Well, well, it actually was. It worked out positive and negative. The positive was that because he sent me home. Mm -hmm. I checked the blood sugar, it was between 400 and 800. That's I could have dangerous. died on the way, that's the negative part. But the positive thing is, had I not tried the aloe then, mm -hmm. I would not have known that it would have worked. Had, I, had he checked that blood, blood sugar, he would have immediately put me into the hospital. I would never have been able to oh. try the aloe vera. Perhaps I would have been sense. on insulin for the rest of my life. Maybe I'd have been dead because a lot of diabetics, because of gangrene setting in, mm -hmm. circulation is so poor, they die from the side effects of the disease. Now, how did you know how much aloe vera juice to take, and you know, what prompted you to really take it at this point? I didn't even know how much to take. I couldn't even remember what this woman told me. But two ounces flew into my brain, and I said, all right, I'll take two ounces in the morning, and I took two ounces in the evening, and I recorded my results, checked my blood sugar, just as if I was on insulin. And the first day, I saw no change. Second day, none. Third day, a gradual change. Every day subsequently, a little more. At the end of the one quart of aloe vera juice, my blood sugar was between 80 and 120. Now, did you contact your doctor at all during this period? Not yet. <laughs> at that point, I was so excited because, you see, in nursing school, we learned that once you're a diabetic, 
Mm -hmm. And once you're on insulin, you'll always be on insulin. Oh, really? So when I discovered that this aloe took my blood sugar down and kept it down, I was so excited. I said, I didn't care how it tasted. It wasn't so pleasant. <laughs> I didn't care. I said, I want to try it a little longer first. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed my weight started coming down. Oh, yeah? Yes. I noticed my skin started looking different. I noticed my lungs started feeling cleaner, and I started feeling younger. And I said, wow, this is fantastic. So I started sharing it. First, I shared it with my head nurse. And I shared it with other nurses, and I shared it with a lot of people. And everybody said, well, we'll try it. And they tried it, and it worked. And so from this, you developed another business. I developed a fabulous business. And the, the original business actually went bankrupt. So it was almost like a change that was destined. That is and fantastic. And then I started this business, and it became so wonderful. I traveled all over the world, Hong Kong. China, I went to um, Australia, New Zealand. Have, bag, have aloe vera in your bags and you're off. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now it you was a lot of fun. Now this became so successful for you that you started a clinic and it's called the Happier You Clinic out yes. on Elmont, New York. Yes. And I love the name of the Happier You Clinic because every time I think about it I get this little face with the, you know, the circle, and the, <laughs> yes. uh, I was going to say man, but it's a woman's show, uh, the <laughs> face. So, you know, it just brings a lot of joy to you just saying the happier yes. you clinic. Yes, yes, yes. How did you come up with that name? Well, first of all, I felt that um, when you came to my clinic, you must leave happier than you walk in. So even if you're happy, you can leave happier. And the reason is that I had nothing but good news to share. I discovered that the human body responds to the thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. that we hold on to as humans. And when you're thinking happy thoughts, your body heals itself. It sends off endorphins and everything works perfect inside. When you are thinking negative thoughts and you're very, very angry and miserable, the opposite is true. You create a lot of diseases. The body was designed to function with ease. And when you are angry and you're creating these all sorts of changes inside your body, it changes your body and it becomes diseased. So happiness is very important to good health. So what you're saying is that you keep manifesting negative thoughts. Yes. It's going to create a disease within. What you within think about, you bring about. Well, that's great. I mean, it's because. All right, so now if I want to become a multimillionaire, I can keep thinking yes, I want to be a multimillionaire absolutely. and I'm going to be the healthiest Eventually, person around. Eventually, you'll, be, you'll become a multimillionaire and you'll be all around rounded and happy. Well, that sounds fantastic. And, you have to, and people naturally seem to hold on to the negative side. And it seems as if when they're going through their crisis, it's very difficult for them to switch. Right. But it's something that can be done as long as it's practiced. Do you say something like an affirmation? To every day or something to keep you going? In the beginning, yeah. I did. Now, I don't. It's it, almost as if I maintain a certain attitude about life. And it came from all the obstacles that I've overcame, I say, I guess. Wow. Realizing that there is nothing, nothing too serious that you really cannot do something positive about. It's your attitude and how you choose to look at it. A glass is either half full or half empty. How do you see it? I see it always half full. There you go. Some of the other things that we had been talking about prior to the showtime, you were saying about um, you took courses in iridology, 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 and herbology, and herbology. Yes. Okay. Tell us a little bit more about the ira iridology. The, uh, right. Okay. After seeing what the aloe vera juice did to my body and to all the people that I shared it with, I realized that there was something more to natural substances, and so I actually went to a meeting called a Herbal Connection. And to my shock and surprise, I met a doctor from Buffalo mm -hmm. who was an iridologist. And I'd never heard the term before. And he was able to look in the iris of the eye, which is the color part of your eyes, and then tell you what's going on in your body. Because your iris has basically a map which tells you everything that's going on because it's connected by the autonomic nerve wreath. And with this nerve wreath, every part of your body is, is basically pictured. And you can tell where the weaknesses are, where the strengths are. You can tell nutritional deficiencies. You can even tell healing. You can see the lines healing with the matrix. Oh, my goodness. You can see stress lines. You can tell when a person is diabetic, the pupil is very large. You can tell when a person has cholesterol right around the ring is very white. It's phenomenal. 
well, I've got to sign up for this. <laughs> I mean, how long does it take? <laughs> to study it? Well, no, that's okay, okay, just to have yeah, it. You okay, do it. it takes about half an hour. Okay. And oh, then, we don't have time today. But. Okay. <laughs> and then, basically, based on the fact that it takes about 15 years for most diseases to really manifest, we actually, being able to suggest natural substances, can reverse these diseases and prevent them from coming to pass. So you can see things long before the symptoms develop. And so it really is a benefit for everybody. I you don't have to be sick. Well, I should really come now because I'm in a uh, quandary. You know, you hear so much about AIDS and breast cancer and heart disease and menopause. That's right. And my mother had breast cancer, and mm. the jury's still out. I'm trying to get her records about whether she really had cancer because uh, my father said no, and my aunt said uh, no. My father said yes, she did have cancer. My aunt said no, she did not. And okay. Both my parents are deceased, so that jury's out. Yes. And then my mother also had heart problems. So it's kind of like I'm between and betwixt, yes. and you know, well, time marches on here, so I better find out. Yes, prevention is better than cure, really. And the human body is amazing. All we have to do is take care of it, nurture it, give it the best quality nutrients possible, think the best thoughts, hold on to nothing but happy feelings, and the body actually heals itself. Even if you had problems, it will disappear. You don't even know you had them. Well, do you have a set formula for, for people to just maintain a healthy body? Yeah, yes. I basically put them on a substance called pycnogenol. Comes oh, all the nice way from France. That's a new word. Yes, it's the bark of the pine tree the maritime pine tree. Mm -hmm. And the natural substance is called proanthocyanidin. And this substance actually gets rid of free radicals in the system that creates degenerative diseases. What are free radicals? Well, free radicals are nothing more than toxic oxygen. Everybody breathes. We're breathing in oxygen as O2, but we're not using it as O2. We use one oxygen atom and the other one flies free. And then it creates basically uh, havoc because it degenerates, takes away one electron and it goes and take a, robs another electron and then it breaks down the cell membrane. Then the DNA codes change and all of a sudden cancer cells sets in and all sorts of diseases, arthritis, and lupus. Living, and living in New York, it just compounds it because everything is here, especially if it's a hot, muggy day, it's you compounded. Breathe you breathe them in, mm -hmm. even on a sunny day, you breathe in millions of free radicals. You get them in your food, that you're eating, the water you're drinking, and your metabolic process produces it. So just from being alive, you produce free radicals. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and this is basically what causes the aging process. And that is why even in nursing school, you know, when I asked the instructor, what can we do to prevent ourselves from going through these awful degenerative diseases? Mm -hmm. And she said, absolutely nothing. It goes with the territory of aging. Oh, lovely. And now I can say I disagree with that. There is a lot that we can do to protect our bodies from this free radical that causes the aging process. Well, how do you know how much to take? I mean, if you're taking vitamins, okay, you take one a pill a day or you take a dozen pill or what, and if you go into a health food store, they've got 10 different brands of vitamin B or vitamin C. How do you know the right one to take and the quantity to take? Well, with the pycnogenol, it's easy. There's a 20-20 rule where you take one 20 milligram pycnogenol tablet for every 20 pounds body weight. And you take that between two weeks and a month for saturation. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you could come down to like two, three a day. Oh. So that's the pycnogenol. But people do have to educate themselves. It really comes down to that. Vitamin C in the form of ester C is absorbed 100%. Many vitamins that people buy, they are absorbed between 15 to 30% and that's it. So the rest just goes away as waste. So they have rich urine, rich stool, but they need to educate themselves. There are vitamins out there that are absorbed into the system for the most part, and that's the ones that they need. And the ones now, I noticed that when you're dealing with a natural substance like aloe vera, for example, uh -huh. in that plant, it has the vitamins and minerals, even vitamin B12, which is not found in another plant, but in the right proportion, the way the body needs it. It works synergistically with the body, and therefore, you don't have to wonder how much C do I need, how much E do I need. It has the right proportion. Well, in addition, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. In addition, it has anti-inflammatory agents, which takes care of inflammation. Right. Antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. It even works as a painkiller. Another it's just wonder drug. Phenomenal natural stuff, and, it, and the body heals itself. These substances only support the body. 
So in other words, if I take an aloe vera plant and kind of break open one of the cacti or the stems, and can I chew it? Can I eat it? Well, actually, it really only grows in warm climates. Oh, all right. So that's one of the drawbacks. And so we actually need a stabilized product mm -hmm. that can go in a bottle. So you need a mature plant also. It takes three to five years to mature in the earth. A potted plant is good, but not as good as the one in the earth. You could break the potted plant off for cuts and burns and sunburns and bruises. But uh -huh. when it comes to taking care of diabetes, like for the, what I have, you need a lot of aloe. And so you need a mature aloe. And the main part of it is called mucopolysaccharide. Sure. A lot of people hear aloe vera and they see the bottle that says aloe vera and they think that they're getting aloe vera. Unfortunately, most companies are not selling a lot of aloe in their aloe vera juice. They're selling a lot of water. The main part is called mucopolysaccharide. That's the active ingredient in it. And so this is really what makes the difference. Fair how much sense. of that substance. So that's why you need to be educated. You really need to be educated. Out of curiosity, how much do you take as far as the aloe vera today? Okay. And your panaginol. Okay. And any other vitamins that, or minerals or herbs that you mix in for your daily nutritional balance, so to speak? Well, I take a lot. And the reason that I do is because, not that I need it. I, as for diabetes, it's now 12 years. I do not consider myself a diabetic anymore. I am in tip-top shape. I take 10 pycnogenols a day, and the reason, and that is like 200 milligrams. Mm -hmm. And my reason is for maintaining my energy, because I have three children. One is 16, one is 12, and one is nine. They keep me busy. I'm no longer married, so I'm a single parent, which means I have to play mom and dad. And I have a business that I run, plus the clinic that I run. And so it needs stamina and energy. And since I studied all about the herbs, everything that would support me to stay young, I take. I believe in life, mm -hmm. and I feel that since the body is able to do everything itself, all it needs is to give it the nutrients it needs. And I take vitamins and minerals. I take um, um, aloe vera. I can take that like two ounces to six ounces. It depends on how I feel. If I'm going to do something special, I'll take more. I sing also. If I'm going to sing, I'll take more because it takes a lot of energy to sing. My so God. <laughs> I just take everything that you could possibly think of. My, I strengthen my heart. I take a heart tonic, so it strengthens my heart, so it stays good. Do you ever test yourself to see if you still have diabetes? or? I test, yeah. Once in a while, I test myself. But even without a test, I can tell. You, you can tell? Yeah, you, you can tell. So you're very psychic and intuitive as well as? Yes, I'm very much in tune because I feel that the body, the mind, and the spirit are one. And that's why my clinic started as, as, a, as a holistic clinic. Mm -hmm. where spirit, body, and mind unite. Because in the hospital, we basically treat people as separate entities. You know, the psych ward is different from the medical floor. And the truth is, you have to put them together. Because the mind is what determines what happens in the body. And so when you don't treat the person's mind, then all sorts of things will happen in the physical body. I wish you could go around and educate all these doctors and all these nurses. Well, the <laughs> nurses, I think, are a little bit more open than a lot of these doctors, because if it's not in their textbook that they learned in medical school, yes. then there's a problem here. We don't believe in it. And the AMA is finally coming out and saying, well, maybe yeah. this will help you. In the meantime, you've got all these other nutrients that you should be having. Yeah. My grandmother, who lived to be either 97 or 100, father and I always disputed this, yeah. um, she always said, you are what you eat. Yes. And she was fit and sharp as a tack until the day she died. And she was very conscious of what she put into her body. Yes. And she was the original one who taught me how to start reading labels. Yes. And looking at the ingredients of what I'm putting into my body. And One thing I would add to what your mom said, and that is, you are what you eat and absorb. Oh, um, and absorb. Yes. You can eat a lot of things and not get the benefit from it. So it's both. Well, you've had quite a, quite a lot of experience here, and going mm -hmm. back and forth and um, with all your businesses. Where would you like to see yourself in five years? They usually say on an interview question. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of my basic um, favorite things to do is to be a, a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. And my best talent that I love is to sing. I feel as if I'm going to put everything in one. I'm going to be speaking about health and mm -hmm. teaching people how to take care of their bodies, which is what I enjoy doing. 
and then I want to sing for pleasure and also to bring people to understanding, you know, harmony within themselves. Because I find that when I sing, I'm the happiest. <laughs> I really am. So. What do you sing normally? Do you sing jazz or? Rhythm and blues. Rhythm and blues. Things like Mariah Carey songs, like Hero and. Um, oh, how exciting! Songs we'll have to do a show with you doing some <laughs> singing or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you were going to give anybody advice in the closing moments of the show here, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? As far as your health is concerned? Yeah. I would say to them, life is such a gift, and everybody needs to be conscious, aware that their health is in their own hands, and it's important for them to become educated mm -hmm. so they can learn what to do to support the body to maintain itself, and that they should live every day as if it's their last, and then live every day as if they're going to live forever. Wow. That's uh, pretty good. <laughs> it's, well, from somebody who's overcome a lot of obstacles in her life, starting, let's say, at 17. I'm sure there were a few before 17. Yeah, sure. And every time something detrimental happened to you, you've turned it around and made quite a business and a success story from it. Yes, in fact, my third baby was my real star, star, scar turning into a star. I had an aloe vera baby for the third one, and she was absolutely perfect. Isn't Healthy, normal, and to this day, she is so sharp, she's so keen, and she's well-adjusted and lovable. Everybody loves her. That's frightening. I mean, yeah. to be so... And it's because of the diabetes. That, I mean... So it was really good becoming a diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to say that. Yes, it, it changed my life for the better. Well, it started basically when you had toxema for your first yes, pregnancy, first pregnancy and you started your own entrepreneurial business. Yes, yes. And that spurred you on and realized that you could really do quite a bit. And In fact, had. when I started, when I got pregnant the second time and I saw my business switch uh -huh. to this other company with Aloe, I was so nervous when I had a third baby as to what was going to happen. I did not want to leave this business. So I'm saying, what's going to happen? This baby is going to bring me another business. And you know what? She brought me abundance just total abundance in the same business. That's fabulous. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it's absolutely wonderful to have somebody who has had so many interesting things happen to her. They were monumental, and how she's overcome them, it's just fantastic. And Maureen, you are a testimony to positive thinking. Thank you. Body, soul, and spirit, and I wish you continued success. And I, I would love that. to make an appointment to have my eyes dilated, or not dilated, <laughs> looked into, and it gives new meaning to the romantic term, let me look into your eyes. <laughs> the window of your soul. The window of my soul. Well, thank you very much, Maria. You're welcome. It was wonderful a pleasure. It was a pleasure. to have pleasure. you here. Thank, thank you. you.